Okay. So let me dive just a little bit. Garrett and I are going to kick you off today, um, and we're going to start talking about the federal research security landscape. So a lot of the murmurings around research security um, really started taking shape in October of 2019. Now, prior to this time, there were institutions that had research security programs. Most of those institutions were heavily DOD funded. Um, most of those institutions were dealing with applied research, um, maybe controlled unclassified information, research of, the, of that ilk. And so um, they already have kind of very robust and mature research security programs. But most of the institutions in the U.S. are doing fundamental research. It's not really restricted in any way. And so we're very used to having this very open and collaborative space, not just within the United States, but globally. Um, and so starting in October of 2019, the FBI started publicly warning U.S. colleges specifically about Chinese-linked intellectual property theft and cyber intrusions. Um, they were saying that these things were directly targeting university research and wanting to um, appropriate uh, intellectual property so that the U.S. could be less competitive in the open market. Around that same time, other U.S. intelligence and oversight bodies, um, they were increasingly starting to spotlight the concern around what they called foreign talent recruitment programs. And we'll talk just a little bit more about that. Um, so a foreign talent recruitment program is really a program that is sponsored by a foreign government that seeks to engage with our, our faculty. Um, and sometimes that can be done so in a way that would put um, that faculty member at a disadvantage, or it may compromise the, um, the integrity of the research as well as the security of that research. Um, during this time, there were also um, investigations and academic reports um, related to institutional case studies that revealed instances where faculty were not disclosing um, all of their sources of support or all of their activities um, with international governments and foreign parties. And so taken together, a lot of this tied around concerns about foreign influence, concerns about intrusion, um, not really disclosing all of your areas of support, all of this kind of culminated into the, the uh, creation and the development of what's called NSPM 33. So I'm going to turn it over to Garrett, who's going to talk a little bit about NSPM 33 and how it's shaping the research security landscape. 